Hello, this is Janet Michael. In addition to hosting The Valley today each weekday at noon on the River 95.3, I also produce podcasts, and I'm excited to introduce you to a new podcast series in partnership with Lord Fairfax Community College. Having provided higher education and career training for the past half century, LFCC is tightly interwoven into the fabric of the Northern Shenandoah Valley and Piedmont regions. Join me every week for conversations with current and former students to hear their funny and inspiring stories as we learn about their journey to higher education, the role that LFCC has played, where they are now, and where they plan to go. We'll also talk to current and former professors about their experiences and best memories of LFCC over the past 50 years. Get every single episode as they're released on our website at theriver953.com under the podcast tab, or you can subscribe for free in Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, on Spotify, Amazon Music, wherever you listen to podcasts. Just search for LFCC Stories. Hello and welcome to the Valley Today. I am your host, Janet Michael. Happy Monday as you are listening to the show today. We, however, have pre-recorded our conversation on the Zoom screen. And I'm kind of bummed because this is one of my favorite guests to have a conversation with face-to-face in person. But hey, these days I'll take it however I can get it. John Huddy is on the Zoom screen with me. He is the executive director at the Hanley Regional Library System. And John, we spent a good bit of time catching up before we started started recording, but I understand the library is alive and doing well in the middle of this pandemic. It is. And thank you for your wonderful intro. Uh, Everyone, I did pay her for that, of course. Uh, uh, Five United States dollars to say that nice stuff. Um, Yes, we are. We are open and welcoming to all individuals. You know, we have the mitigation efforts to keep the coronavirus at bay. Uh, Knock on wood. So far, it's been all right. And we've, you know, gotten out there, a lot of staff has been vaccinated, but we, um, we've done a lot of things, you know, you got to wear the mask and all that, and we do limit people to an hour. Uh, we might be adjusting all of this soon, but um, as things get, you know, better, but we are working in a more of a virtual world, but you can still come in and find your materials and check your stuff out. We do have access to the internet via our in-house um, computer station as well as the checkoutable hotspots, which we have 40 something of that we check out or pretty much nonstop checkouts. So we've done some things. One of the nice things that we didn't actually do, which happened for us, was each of the libraries got an air handling system upgrade. So each branch uh, the this building, it just was happenstance. Um, they redid the HVAC system in this building because of just was needed. It had been over 20 years and was beginning to fall apart. And so the city of Winchester and the Hanley Library Trust or the Hanley Trustees and all worked together towards funding this upgrade of these HVAC system, which was completed over the summer or pretty much the end of the summer. And that system, as well as the system of Bowman, will clear out the building every half an hour, run it through a filtration system and zap any particulates in there that are harmful to include viruses. It's pretty neat the way it works. The one you walk in a room and you're breathing as a sensor that picks up carbon dioxide, which you exhale. And as soon as it exhales and it hits the sensor, it turns on and starts clearing the room. So it doesn't do it in every room all the time. Um, and Bowman Library used CARES Act money, Frederick County did, and we thank them for this, and put new air handling systems on top of the building over there to do the same thing every half an hour, every 15 minutes. It sucks the air out of the building, cleans it, and returns it. As we know from this, this virus is an airborne issue more than tactile fomites, as it's called, when it sticks to something. But um, so that's another way of sort of avoiding the issue. So if somebody does have it, we're not within a few feet of them. And if they do, it'll get up and out out of the room. Which is nice because that's going to be a long-term thing, that pandemic aside, it's not like you're going to take those things out after the pandemic passes. This is something right. that you're going right. to have. Even flu viruses or anything else is airborne, it'll do the same thing. So it's a win-win for everybody. Now, you mentioned a minute ago how, you know, of course, we know this is more of an airborne virus. I know you guys were taking a lot of steps in uh, kind of quarantining your materials when people were checking them out and returning. Right. Do you right. still have to do that? Are you doing that differently? We're doing a little differently that if a book is going back out to somebody, we wipe it down. 
Uh, we realized that most of our materials when they go back on the shelves, uh, they're not going to be touched by another person probably in several days. By the time it actually gets in, gets on a cart and gets back out, it's three or four days anyways. But if it's going to go right back into somebody's hand, like a book on hold like, or a DVD or something that somebody wants or the hotspots, they get wiped down with a you know, 70, 80 percent alcohol solution so that it's not, you're not touching something that somebody just sneezed on. Um, and we are doing some quarantining anyways, but I think we're gonna gradually phase that out over time. So yeah, that's another mitigation effort that we are looking into. Weather aside, because you know we've had all kinds of crazy snow going on and all that sort of thing. Are you back to normal hours at the libraries? We're still reduced hours because of the way we've got the mitigation set up where we have a greeter, we're gonna, Stick with it for a while. We're probably going to change it in the near future. But so instead of 10 to 8, Monday through Thursday, and 10 to 5, Saturday, or Friday and Saturday, it's Monday through Thursday, 10 to 6, Friday, 10 to 5, Saturday is 10 to 2 o'clock. And one of the reasons is that we have time to have staff clean and stuff rather than, you know, before. So. I was having a conversation last week with uh, Mayor John David Smith. He was on the show to talk about Winchester Restaurant Week that happened last week. And, and, and in passing, we, we started talking about vaccinations. And I mentioned that Valley Health and Shenandoah University are doing such a phenomenal job that you guys, a lot of businesses are going to be able to open a lot quicker and maybe get out of some of these protocols and these restrictions because right. so much of our community is going to have been vaccinated in much sooner than what anybody I think expected. Right. As of last week, I think there've been 15% of the entire community. That's the whole Lord Fairfax Health District, which stretches all the way down past Morton County and up. Um, and that was had 15 to 20% of it already done. And we're only in February. And so they've done a really phenomenal job of ensuring that the first responders and the library staff, because unlike other institutions, we were open every day and we had 300, there's th over 300 people coming into the three libraries every day, 300 random strangers every single day are coming in. That was our average uh, visitation per day. And so, you know, we talked to them and they were like, sure, we'll get you in there. And so we got most of our staff taken care of a little bit ago, about the same time as the teachers did, uh, which is good because we want to make sure that they're safe since they're out there on the front lines helping our customers, you want to make sure that they're taken care of and they, they all appreciated it. So you uh, mentioned a few minutes ago about how so much of what the library does now pandemic or not is virtual. And I know that you've had two new virtual book clubs for grownups that you guys have started. Yes. Interesting segue that. How, how about that? You're a professional. Um, yes, we have two, the introducing the graphic novel book club. Uh, which is, you know, the graphic novels are like a really cool, I know when I was a kid, there was heavy metal, but that we won't speak about that as a little naughty, but there's all sorts of graphic novels from The Walking Dead. So there's a book discussion group that's coming up about that. So you can look online and find out about, all about it. So that's one. And the other one is the Brown Bag Book Club, which is run by the Clark County Library. Of course, it's virtual, so it can be anywhere. On March 3rd, they're going to do Born a Crime, which is Trevor Noah, TV's funny man, Trevor Noah, uh, his book, which is coming to you grow up in South Africa as a, I guess, a mixed race person. And so there was issues with that in that country at that time. And then April 7th, The Vanishing Half by Britt Brennan. So you can do that. We'll all get online and, you know, discuss books. It's pretty cool. Well, let's take a quick break. When we come back, I've got more things on my list that I want to ask you about career services, other virtual programs for adults. And I want to talk about this new uh, search bar on your website. So can we do all that in the next segment? Yes. All right. Well, we are going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to continue our conversation with John Huddy. He is the executive director at the Hanley Regional Library System. Remember, there is Hanley Regional Library in downtown Winchester, as well as the Clark County Library and Bowman Library in Stephen City. We're going to come back and talk more about some of their programs going on at all of their libraries in just a couple of minutes. Got a financial decision to make or a goal to reach, but you don't know where to start? you come to the right place. Introducing Quick Money Chats with the Northern Shenandoah Valley Financial Education Program. Visit tinyurl.com backslash quickmoneychat to schedule a virtual chat with a staff member or trained volunteer. 
We won't tell you what to do, but we will give you the tools you need to choose wisely. And because Virginia Cooperative Extension is part of Virginia Tech and Virginia State, your land grant universities, you can be sure that our information is credible and trustworthy. And you'll know that we aren't trying to sell you something. Maybe you want to improve your credit score or reduce your banking overdraft fees, or even figure out if you can afford to buy that car. Sorting through tons of information on the internet can be overwhelming, and sometimes it can be hard to know who to trust. Schedule a quick money chat and get the information you need to take action. Go to tinyurl.com backslash quick money chat and get financial education personalized for you. Welcome back to the Valley today. I am your host, Janet Michael. Happy Monday as you are listening to the show today. We have pre recorded our conversation though on the Zoom screen. We are chatting today with John Huddy. He is the executive director at the Hanley Regional Library System. And John, while you and I were talking during the break, I got a notification on my phone that uh, my Amazon package, my delivery guy is 10 stops away. And it suddenly oh. occurred to me, I didn't put the dogs in the crate. So I'm going to warn you and the listeners at some point, they may hear a burst of barking because the Amazon guy here is here dropping something off in the driveway. <laughs> well, hopefully that's a happy bark. Well, their Chewy uh, Box I'm came not. earlier today, so I don't think they, they they don't they don't like the Amazon boxes. They know the Chewy Boxes are blue, and it's usually something for them. <laughs> <laughs> so when we went to break, we were talking about the virtual book clubs, but you guys have this really cool new virtual series that is kicking off in March. It's a three part series called Exploring the Library, and I love this idea. Tell me about it. Well, why? Thanks for asking about that. <laughs> there are three virtual sessions we're going to be offering to cover uh, different parts of how to use the library, more or less, how to virtually use the library. The first one is on March 10th, exploring the library, tips and tricks on how to search the catalog, how to browse just the movies, how to find a perfect next read. We have a tool that allows you to, if you like this book, you can find that book. Um, virtual tour of our catalog, essentially. You can filter your results, learn all this fun, all this easy to use ways to narrow down to find what you're actually looking for rather than can go through a bajillion things. Um, the next one's on March 17th. It's exploring the library, hidden treasures on the library website. The virtual workshop discovers some of the great resources that you found on the website. New arrival letters, tutorials on using the library tools that we have, getting community resources and that sort of thing. So that's on March 17th. And the third one is March 24th, exploring our digital library which is all the digital resources we have, which includes audiobooks, magazines, ebooks, homework helpers, and business resources, and things like job and career help, which I'm, you mentioned before to me about um, how to get career assistance, or if you're going to take something like the ASVAB or the NCLEX test to be a nurse. Um, all these tests are available online for free, and you can practice them until you can get in there and tell the um, recruiter that you are the best soldier they could ever be and go straight into officer candidate school. You skip all that enlisted nonsense. That's a joke, enlisted men. Please don't set fire in the library. <laughs> uh, I, mean, I, understand, I understand jokes. At any rate, um, so that's a really cool way to learn about all the stuff that we're doing. So yeah, tune in and learn all about us. And I think it's great because so many times, and, and I have learned this just from my conversations with you over the last couple of years of you being a guest on the show, you know, I always thought I knew everything about what was available at the library. I mean, we all think we already know what's available there, but I've learned all of these different things that you guys do and offer that I had no idea was either there within your four walls or was accessible to me via the website or online in some way. Right. And that's why we're here on your radio show at this very moment is not for your personal edification, though that is important to me. It's to make sure that everybody knows about all the cool stuff because people think it's some dusty place where you get shushed. It is a dusty place and you will get shushed, but it's also a place that has a, a whole bunch of different resources. I've been shushed, basically. So, yeah, it's a great place. It's, you know, there's always something. I don't even know all the new stuff because it changes so often, it doesn't change, but there's so much new stuff added by my overly thoughtful staff that we have to constantly, I have to constantly relearn what new things we're doing. Uh, I'd love to say that I know everything. I claim that, but that's not actually true, so. 
You have access to be able to know everything. Access, that's exactly correct. So you mentioned career services a second ago. I know that we've talked about this on the show in the past, but people have access to some sort of database that you guys have where they can look up careers and how, what the salary is and educational requirements in our area or anywhere in the country, don't you? That's correct. We have the online, what's it called, Learning Express uh, a test. And I know we we're going to talk about the online um, system where you can learn of all the different things, but we now, you can, you can pull up our one-stop search tool that we just started. Type in ASVAB, ASVAB, Armed Services Vocational Aptitude Battery, and it'll pull up online ebooks, regular books, every bit of it, all in one spot. So the Learning Express, I think it's what it's called, you make sure. It's a great tool for you to learn all that you need to learn. And there's a whole bunch of different, there's computer tutorials, Peterson's Career Prep, Learning Express Library by um, EBSCO. It's a, um, for, for learning centers, everything past the GAD, college, military, occupational certificate, job assistance, resume assistance, career changes, getting your citizenship, We've got Mango Languages, which is a language tool. If you got to learn English to you know, better your English skills to get a job, we're here for that. And Universal Class is a different way, uh, 500 different online courses. You can learn everything from photography to physics, how to be a pet groomer. I know that's in there, so I looked that up. How to, my dog is very smelly right now because of winter. It's not a great time at any rate too. I know as you were saying that I'm thinking, oh my gosh, all of the things that I can search that are dog related, like, you know, how to give these dogs a bath without making my house a mess and how to, right. you know, train them to come when I call them and all of these things. All I got to do is use that search bar and I can find all of the information I need. That is correct. It's new and it was, a, it's called a discovery layer. It basically takes all our old search you had to go to the three different spots to find ebooks, career resources online or books. And now they'll all come up journal articles, all that stuff. So it's like an internal uh, Google search for all of the stuff that you have access to. That is correct. Although we probably would have to give Google a quarter for saying their name out loud in public you on the radio. It's e -E -W -G -L -E, so <laughs> you don't have to give them anything. Depends, <laughs> yeah. It all, it all depends on how you pronounce it as to how that works. <laughs> Have yeah. you seen an uptick in people coming in person to the library versus people accessing more of the online resources? It's still off by about half, but it's gone up a little bit. I think it was 50% of pre-pandemic levels and now it's like uh, 60% or, you know, it's up by 10 or 20%. So it is up a little bit, but yesterday, you know, when we have a floating, we're supposed to keep only X number in here. And we're below the governor's level. So as long as we're below the governor's level, we can we float it to make sure. We just don't want a whole bunch of people in a small area together. We just basically try not to be a public health hazard. But we got to move on with life and get things done. And, you know, being open and for our community is, is something that's a priority for us. Because we believe in the public libraries and institutions support us. He says, well, you know not drawing dollar signs in the air, but thinking <laughs> that. <laughs> no, they can support us with their love and affection, which is just as important as money. However, if you give us money, you'll get more. It, yeah, you get, you, it feels better. How about that? You yeah. get a better, a bigger warm and fuzzy if you write a check, particularly a check with a comma in it. <laughs> I'm not saying that you said that. I yeah, just, those are my favorite checks. I always yeah. encourage people when I have a nonprofit on to write a check with a comma because those are the best checks of all. <laughs> yes, we will be your best friend forever if you do that. So yeah. before we wrap up, can you run through, do I get to all of the different libraries and all of the information and the resources that each of the three of them have from the one website or are there three different yes. websites? No, just the one, handleyregional.org and all the information for all locations is right there where you might try to make it seamless between libraries. So if you want a book from that's the Clark County Library, you find on a catalog, they can ship it to Bowman or Hanley, wherever you live that you live. It'll be there within one day or, you know, Saturday to Monday. And it's a, we're one place, but we're three locations. And then you've got all kinds of social media outlets. I know you're on Facebook, yeah. you're on Twitter, you're on Instagram, you're on all those places. That's correct. 
Facebook's a great way to find out what programs are doing. And then you've got the podcast. I know that was one yes. of uh, Matt's projects library, back oh, in wow. the day. Yes, well, we've got a podcast that highlights different parts of the library, staff, that sort of thing. So, Can I access it from your website too? That is correct, 100%. Fantastic. And tell me one more time what the hours are before we log off for the day. Monday through Thursday, 10 to 6. Friday, 10 to 5. Saturday, 10 to 2. And those hours are universal across all three locations. That is correct. See, that makes it so much easier. Thank yes, you for that. It wasn't that. like that when I first got here because of the situation that had gone on prior, but we worked with the board and the community to make sure we had the funding to be good to go. Well, we are going to wrap up our conversation today with John Huddy. He is the executive director at Hanley Regional Library System. John, as always, it is a pleasure talking to you. Thanks for taking some time out of your day to record with me. Yes, and you as well, and you and your little doggies have a great day. Absolutely. I'll be back tomorrow. It is Tourism Tuesday, Shenandoah County edition, and I believe we are going to be chatting with some women-owned businesses in Shenandoah County. So meet me back here to have a listen tomorrow, just a few minutes after noon.